This is the fuselage bag for the Zipkits G30. Already opened it, had to get a couple parts out of there for the Sponson build. It's like some formers, lengthwise formers for the sheeting. These would be the sides for the radio box. Here's down the center of the fuselage. Nose block for the fuselage. The sheet is for nitro build. If you're building nitro, I won't be needing that. The sheet looks like lid for the radio box, a few other formers. That's where I got the transoms for the sponsons out of this sheet. This sheet here had the square that I used already. This has a bunch of formers. Everything very nicely done. Laser cut out. It's a beautiful kit. And here's the fuselage bottom. So I'm gonna need to get a little wax paper put back down again. And we're gonna build this with the front facing that way. These formers look like transom formers. So that'd be five B and C. That would mean this would be the transom. So I want to build it facing this way. Okay, we we'll get some wax paper. Gonna let this sit overnight and dry at this point. I'm using tight bond too in this syringe. I'd like to get these side pieces in, but I gotta wait the way I have this taped up to hold the side square pieces going across here with tape. With the tight bond too. It uh, doesn't set up as quick as CA, so I need to let this set overnight. Been checking things. Got the sides nice and square. This front of the radio box. Put those side pieces in later. We got the transom. All bonded together, laminated, three layers, clamp. So, using it with this syringe, first time I've done a build with tight bond. Usually, I'll go with CA or epoxy. Should be nice and lightweight, very strong. So, we'll let this set overnight and Put the sides on. This has been drying overnight. When I started to build, this bottom piece of plywood had a bit of a curl to it. So I have all these corners pinned down. I also pinned both sides where these tabs 
lock into the floor. Got it pinned front corners. So I'm going to pull the tape off. It's holding all the sides square to these bulkheads. And we'll put the uh, side pieces in to the radio box while it's still pinned to the board, especially these corners here. This is actually done in the order of the um, directions. I just had to wait overnight for everything to dry, but I find this to be very fascinating, very well thought out. If you look here, here, these are tabs that snap in this way. This is a tab that snaps in that way. And there's a tab back on the transom. So the directions say, snap these all in place, then pull these back so you can lift the bottom. So I have a slight gap here now. In other words, in order to get this bottom down, all these tabs have to be engaged in the bottom. If, you, if you're out like this, you can't push it down. So you line them up like that, raise it up, run a bead of glue on the inside, push it down, and then everything snaps in place. So this has to be pulled back square to snap in place. This squares up. So these snap this way, this snaps that way, you just flex the plywood slightly, and this snaps in place. So very doable. Now I just have to go ahead and do that to both sides, glue all this together. All these bulkheads will now be nice and square. This is why he said don't glue on the outside, just on the inside of the radio box. These pieces here have to sit down flush so you can't have a glue joint in there on the bottom right in here. They need to be flush with the top of these um, bulkheads so the Sheeting sits flat. It's a handy little tool I've been using. It's a piece of spruce. It's like three sixteenths. Got it sanded flat on one end, an angle on the other. Let's me kind of use it like a tiny spatula, one to press the glue into the joints, and the other to scrape off excess. So just like this has to sit down on the floor, so it's flush with the top of the bulkheads, also need to clean the glue out right in this corner so the sheeting sits down. So just kind of spatula it in with that angled in, wipe it off, kind of make for cleaner joints. 
also get a little better penetration to this glue. These are all numbered six through nine. Numbers go forward. That gives the correct contour for the top sheeting to match this outside piece. These can't be reversed. That should be all the structure on the fuselage. They have all the supports for the top sheeting on both sides. The entire radio box is all glued. On the box, I've taped holding inward on these right here to these um, bulkheads. On these bulkheads, I have the tape so it's holding the sides of the radio box against those bulkheads, partial bulkheads, and same with the transom. I have it taped, holding it tight like that. So we'll let that all set up. Interesting thing, I only used 10 milliliters of tight bond glue. So that should be strong and lightweight. Now, at this point, it says do not do the top sheeting after all these supports are in because now it's time to seal everything up. This is the reward, or you might say the thrill of building, the moment you lift it off the board. Is it straight? It's so fun taking a finished structure off the building board. Always is. It's your reward for the time you put in. This is just a teaser. Seriously though, this has went together so nice. I'm not jumping ahead, but look at how straight this is. There's six dowel pins that these go together with. So again, the accuracy of laser cutting in the sides of the fuselage and in the sides of the sponsons. I've assembled this and if we turn it over I've already fitted the stumble blocks in the instructions 
they want us to tape the slots for the stumble blocks when we're sealing it so that we don't fill them with epoxy but when I clamp these sponsons on the sides like we're going to when we assemble this we finally glue it together no gap down through here thinking about now that I have these all fit thinking about epoxy these in before I seal the inside of the fuselage I don't think it'll be any problem to install these after they're epoxied in something to point out is this angle that you sand on here to get these to fit so this is version um, 1.2 version 1.1 added the stumble blocks version 1.2 added slots for the velcro um, velcro in your battery but when I look at how all that fits why not with this clamp like this why not epoxy these two side pieces in we want to get sealer on the inside of these inside here but this is epoxied in I don't have to worry about getting epoxy in slots I can seal the whole inside of the fuselage seal inside here inside these side pieces of the stumble blocks when this is epoxied on you seal all of this seal this and then epoxy that in place the reason I can't um, epoxy these sponsors on right now is these are cut a little long so after I seal inside here just on the sides here that get covered with the sheeting but after I put the sheeting on um, I have to sand them flush other thing that I don't see in the manual for the um, version 1.2 I believe this is the manual is updated these pieces go right here some doublers add a little strength to the transom I've also been looking at servo options you can mount a servo back here with the linkage I want to do my servo up here up in the radio tray have the servo and receiver these holes I haven't punched out these cutouts here yet but pull pull cable steering I think it's good to read ahead in the manual it actually says to do that so you understand what you're doing don't paint yourself in a corner so now I'm going to clamp this back together epoxy the sides of these stumble blocks in and go with that way of building it and then I got lots to do seal on the inside doing the sheeting before i can final assemble it